Hello. Today I'm going to be considering forging a file knife. Now this really goes sideways. Just watch up ahead. Well, first of all, I'll tell you a little bit about it. It was going to be a double edge with a full tang hooked handle. That was a bad, bad idea. I'll show you where it went wrong. First put in the tip, as always, with forging any blade, you always put in the tip first. Yeah, that was my issue right there. I hooked the tang and I screwed up that top bevel. Now it looks more like a, a regular single edge blade. So as you see, I got pretty mad now. I'm just gonna forge it into a single edge blade, just regular knife. But this also poses an issue you'll see up ahead. All right, so we got a problem here. <clears throat> After forging this down, like I said, this was originally going to be a dagger of some sort, you know, a double-edged blade. But when I was hammering it out at the beginning, like you saw, I bent it in the wrong direction. I wanted it to be bent, but this is just an issue. So I forged it out into a knife. The only issue is, is look how thin that is. I mean, if I quench that, it's going to warp. I just know it. I mean, it's about the same thickness as my cutting edge. So I'm going to set this knife aside for now and finish it up later. I mean, it'll probably turn out okay, but I'm not going to waste my time on it. I'm just going to go straight to another blade. I got some 5160 that I can use. And I'll try that out instead because this is not working. Way too thin for me. I'll, I'll try and probably just leave it forge finished. So, let's give it a shot. Alright, so that was bust, so it's on the knife too. Out of it. And I'm going to try to forge this just to a kind of a kitchen knife, you know, long and skinny. My camera keeps focusing in and out. It's probably because I'm filming it with my tablet, but it keeps on focusing in and out because the hot steel messes around with the focus. It like tries to darken it, but then as soon as you hit it, it like lightens back up again. I don't know what the deal is with that. So it just strobes at you. Alright, since we're forging this, I want to take a, a little moment to tell you about my editor, Power Director. This is a really, really cool app. That allows you to make tons of movies and videos from any device, your computer, your phone, your tablet, like I'm doing now. This really does work great. I mean, I would definitely give it five stars. I would recommend this to anyone. And my favorite effect inside the actual app is Chroma Key, which allows you to put in green screen effects. It's really cool. You guys should go check it out. Now I'm forging in the tang.
Now I'll hook the tang so it fits my hands a little bit better. And it looks a little bit nicer too. This is a little one pound hammer I'm using. This really helps take out some of the three pound hammer marks. It straightens things out a little bit nicer. It doesn't put any heavy hits into it. Now I'm straightening it out inside this little portable vise, my drill press vise. Now I know, I may look really funny running back and forth in front of the camera, but this is very important right here to keep everything straight because if this isn't straight then your bevel is not straight when you grind it because all I got is a disc grinder. So I really can't take out any problems that are in the blade. They'll stay with it till the very end. So you got to forge it to shape as closely as you can. I'm going to quench this in water but first I'm going to let it cool down because that's way too hot. I'm going to quench it from about 1400 degrees. A little bit higher now, I think. And it was successful. It didn't warp, it didn't crack, and it hardened well, so. I sort of did an edge quench on it, too. Now I'll cool it. You don't want to leave this in there for too long because otherwise the spine and the tang will harden. And then you got to re-hit it with a high heat like a blowtorch or something to take out the hardness. Next we'll rough grind it. Now I'm just going to take out some of the hammer marks. Now I'll actually take it over to angle grinder and that grinded wheel because it's a lot stronger than this one. And I'll knock off all the main stuff and I'll come back to this wheel and then knock off that grinding wheel stuff and then I'll go over to my belt sander and belt sand it until it looks about this. And this is right off the belt sander. It's like 200 grit. I don't have anything higher than that unfortunately. But I'm just going to take this and then put it into my etching solution which I'll show that in just a moment. Now I'm too cheap to go buy acid so I gotta come up with something, right? So what do I come up with? This slop. Now this slop is 3 to 1 OJ orange juice for your guys' edification and Coca-Cola actually. You mix this two together and it etches very nicely. But in the meantime, let's cut up these handles. Now this is a board from an old log camp. I found it out in the woods. It's like 100 years old or something like that. It's really boring, but it's just cool to know how old it is. So I'll cut it up here with this jigsaw, glue it, and then put it on my knife.
And I'll do a little rough grind on the grinder on these handles. And here I'm just gluing them up with just simple wood glue and I'll put that on the knife and into the vise and I'll let it dry overnight and come back in the morning. And I'll sand it down and I'll show you what it looks like. I'll stain it and seal it. And we're solid. There it is. Now let's just wait till overnight. There it is. Looks pretty cool. It turned out a different design than I thought. Thanks guys for watching. If you liked it, please put a like below. And if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and have a good one.